This morning we come to the Word of God. We're going to begin with John chapter 8. As we uh, approach this subject, Love Revolution, the series, as you see th- through our, uh, our platform, we've, we started out with love confronts with the truth, love that confronts independence, love that confronts pride and self, uh, selfishness, and uh, love that confronts discord, love that confronts sin. Today, we're looking at the scriptures, we're looking at how Jesus, in his love, he confronts lies. And we're going to look at a passage in the scripture where where Jesus uh, shows us and teaches us, tells us in his word, where lies come from. And that's in John chapter 8. I don't know about you, but the enemy has already been working this morning. I went to print off my message, and uh, our our print driver is is, uh, attached to our network, which is um, uh, we have to have the internet in order to to print and uh, the network, and we couldn't print anything this morning. So it's kind of been a little bit uh, out of sorts, but thankfully... uh, Mike loaned me his tablet, and I was able to access my my notes uh, online. So that's that's uh, pretty exciting that I could do that. Thank you, Mike. So oh, if you'll open your Bibles to John chapter eight, we're going to begin looking at verse twenty-eight through verse forty-seven. That'll be the passage that we read. So I'm going to ask you to stand as uh, we read the Word of God. John chapter eight beginning in verse 28 through verse 47. And then Jesus said to them, he's speaking to the Pharisees at this time, religious leaders of Israel. Okay, verse 28. Then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of Myself. But as my father taught me, I speak these things. And he said, and he who sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. And then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him, Well, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, We are not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, 
but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Love confronts lies. Right here in this passage, Jesus is confronting the greatest point of lies. And that is the father of lies. The devil. Satan. He is our enemy. He is our arch rival. He is seeking to destroy everything of God. And everyone who belongs to God who, or who would even be open and leaning towards seeking God. Satan is at every place trying to destroy the works of God. And sometimes, if you pay too much attention to the, the news media, if you listen and read all of the, the stories, and you can see so much bad going on, and so much wrong going on, it almost feels like, What's the use in even trying? You want to give up. You want to just throw in the towel and say, there's no use in trying to do what is good because the whole world is wrong. But I want you to know that is a, say it with me, lie. I want you to know that there is good. And that good is the Lord. And He is in control today. This morning when you woke up, I want to assure you that God is on the throne. He has been on the throne and He will be on the throne. And he is on the throne today. The question, the question that we need to answer today, is God on the throne of your heart today? That's what we need to answer. The liar, Satan, will come at us in every way he can to keep us deceived, to keep us in a fog, in that questioning mode, is God really in control? Does God really know what he's doing? Why is life seem like it's turned upside down on its head? Why is it that, it, that we, we, get, we make strides in life, we see good things, and then all of a sudden we run up against a brick wall and it seems like we cannot find the hope that we had. We cannot find the goodness, the, the, the good news. And it just seems like every time we turn around, something else is going wrong. I want you to know that is a lie from the enemy. The enemy is a liar. He has been a liar from the beginning. We can see in the scriptures that... Satan began with lies. The first lie, which involves humanity, is in Genesis chapter 3, where the enemy, Satan, comes in the form of a serpent and he begins to speak lies to Eve. And he deceives Adam and Eve, and they sin. 
They lied to e- he lied to Eve and Adam about God. And he, he came to them and he portrayed God in a way that they didn't understand. He portrayed God as God was withholding something from them. That God was not all that God said He is. <coughs> and so they were deceived. The enemy is the one who lies to us. But there are, other, there are others that lie to us as well. And, and it is the world. This world system, it's under the sway of our enemy, Satan. And this world system, this world portrays lies to us all. And it seeks to to mold us and form us into what the world wants us to be. And as long as it gets us under its control, that is the product of its lies. It will lie to us in whatever way it can in order to suck us in and, and bring us into submission and to, that we will begin to walk according to the world's way. So we see the enemy, Satan, he lies to us. He's been a liar from the beginning. We see that the world is is holding its sway over us. It is lying to us. And then we also have another enemy that that lies to us, and that is our self. In many occasions, we begin to deceive ourselves. We lie to ourselves. In order to to make ourselves feel better. We lie to ourselves. In order to get what we want. We lie to ourselves. Because the flesh wants to be appeased. It wants to be satisfied. But the, the greatest lie is. Is there is no satisfaction. There is no satisfying the flesh. It will always. Always want more. It always seeks to have more. It will take everything. The flesh will take everything from you. The world will take everything from you. The enemy, Satan, will take everything from you. Jesus talks about the enemy that that would come in in his story in John 10 about the sheep and the shepherd. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. He says, but the thief comes. What does the thief come to do? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. So the thief comes to, to destroy everything, to destroy the sheep. And that is what is happening today. And Satan uses lies in order to accomplish that destructiveness in our lives. Lying is destructive. Lying is from the enemy himself. And those lies, we have to realize, when we begin to lie, when we begin to lie to ourselves, when we begin to lie to others, we are doing what the enemy does. And we are joining up with him in his forces. In Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, We looked at it last week. We'll look at it again because this is what is included in these six things that the Lord hates. Seven things that are abomination to Him. A proud look, a lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift to running to evil. False witnesses who speak lies. And one who sows discord among the brethren. 
Lying is so bad it has made his list in here, not once, a lying tongue, but even worse than that, a false witness who sows lies, speaks lies. Twice it is in the list that God gives of things that he hates that are an abomination to him. We need to seek the truth. Lying comes from immaturity. Lying comes from not understanding and knowing the truth. Lies come from the enemy. We, st- we will not join up with Satan if we know the truth. If we understand and have the perception and, and the the ability to to understand who God is and his great love he loves us so much that he will not allow our lying hearts to continue he wants to stop us and to turn us around that we may embrace the truth Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 14 and 15 he says to us that we should no longer be children Tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and by the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. This comes in the passage where he talks about having given gifts to the body of Christ. It's the leadership gifts, the pastors, the teacher, the prophet, the evangelist, the apostle. He's given that leadership place and giftedness to to people that will lead the body of Christ to grow up. to, To... Gain maturity that we should no longer be children. The problem is is that most Christians do not grow up in their faith. They're still led around by their emotions and whatever feels like it's right. Whatever seems right. And, and they're tossed to and fro. They're batted back and forth from one extreme to another. From one uh, side of the, the, the field to another. Batting back and forth. Not sure where they stand. Not sure where they really need to be. And whatever feels right at that point in time, that's where they're at. That gets wearisome. Bouncing around, back and forth. But God wants us to grow up into Him. He wants us to understand the truth. And so we need to listen to the people, to the men and women of God in our life to help us grow. Who teach us God's word. Who lead us down the path of righteousness. Who guide us into understanding and discerning what is true and what is right. That it may be absolute in our life. The problem with Christians today is that there is no absolutes in their life. We are being sold a lie by the world about this spirituality that seems right. It sounds nice that, that we got to have faith. And, and we... we Post all kinds of inspirational sayings. At first, we would post them in our houses, and sometimes we'd put them in our cars. And now we got Facebook and all the social media, and we post it here, there on Instagram and Pinterest. And we're displaying what we think is our Christianity. But if that is the depth of our Christianity, It's a facade of lies. Our Christianity, our faith has to go deeper than what the world is trying to sell us is is faith. 
Because that kind of faith, the, the, the faith that the world is selling us, is a faith in something out there that nobody can divine. There is no absolute. But our faith is in Jesus Christ alone. And it is Jesus Christ who is the Son of God who died on the cross for our sin, who gave His life, who arose from the dead. And He is alive forevermore. And anyone who places their faith in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. That is the absolute. And we are told in the Word of God That He is the way, the truth, and the life. That is Jesus Christ. There is no way we can get to the Father. No way to the Father, but through Him. That is absolute. And if anything leads us down to a path of believing that there may be some way, somehow, some other way, that we can be acceptable and get to God or be okay, then we are living and listening to a lie. And it's being sold to us. We are being deceived. It's been interwoven in so many things that are out there in the public Christian media that we have to begin to understand and discern what is a lie. And when you bring in the name of Jesus Christ and that He is the only way to heaven, that He is the only way for for the forgiveness of sin, that He is the only way, that his, His death on the cross is what brings our salvation. That is where people begin to squirm. So we need to check it out. Before you repost anything, find out where it comes from, who it comes from, and what they believe. Because we are being sold a bill of goods, a lie, and it comes straight from the enemy, Satan himself. Even within the church, lies are prevailing and so we need to hang on to the truth of God's word and believe that God is on the throne and that he will lead us and guide us if we will cling to his word and study and study and study and read and meditate on the word of God now I enjoy books. I enjoy reading book studies and, and, and things that people have prepared that they help us. We've done Circle Maker. We've done Gods at War. And there are other things that, that we've done before in the past and we'll do in the future. But I want you to know that this is the book that is true and that is right. And if we do not hang all of our faith and belief in God's word, in his living word, Jesus Christ, we are living a lie. We must guard against the deceptiveness of lies within our own body. In the early church, It affected their ministry and outreach because of what snuck into the church was was this hypocrisy through lying. In Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, it tells a story about a, a man named Ananias and a woman named Sapphira. It's a husband and wife. They, they saw how Barnabas was treated when Barnabas sacrificially gave from his his life in, in order to continue the ministry of the gospel and to provide for the needs of of the 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 those who were in the church who were in great need to, to take care of the leaders, the pastors. And and Barnabas gave. And so Ananias and Sapphira saw, hey Look at the recognition Barnabas got. 
And so this is what it says. A certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold the possession, and, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? After it sold, was it not your own, in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon those who heard these things. And the young man arose, wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. And now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. And Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet breathed her last, and the young man came in, found her dead, and carried her out, carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church, and upon all the that heard these things. Hypocrisy began to affect the people in the church. They began to look at the recognition, the position, or the whatever uh, the things that Barnabas had gotten from his gift, and they desired that. And so they, they sold a possession, and then they gave money. The problem was not the, that they had sold the land or that they gave the money. It was in the way that they went about it. And they lied. Not just to the church. Not to just the church leaders. They lied to God. To the Holy Spirit. To themselves. Thinking that, you know, we'll just tell everybody we gave it for this much. And, you know. So the difference between what they sold the property... And what they gave was different. But they were letting people believe that they gave it all. It was their prerogative to give whatever amount they wanted to. It was, they weren't forced. They weren't being held under any uh, force. They chose to lie. And God's judgment fell on them. God is calling for His people to be people of the truth. To be people who won't be seeking out positions or recognition, but who will be seeking the glory of God. God's looking for a people who will be about the truth. Jason brought out the, the hymn or the song from Psalm 51, which is a psalm of, of confession because David had sinned against the Lord and, and he was broken. And in this passage, it, it's a heart cry for God to forgive him, to cleanse him, but, but also, David speaks of that he desires, God desires truth in the inward part. Truth in the inward part. You want to see something here? The truth is, a person's not a liar because they tell lies. Hear me. 
A person is not a liar because they tell lies. They tell lies because they are a liar. It's a heart issue. God wants to change our hearts. God desires to change our hearts because in our natural selves, in our flesh, we will do anything for self. For our own glory. And so God wants to change us so that we will be totally surrendered to Him. That we won't resort to listening to lies, believing lies, telling lies. Because lying is at the heart of sin. God wants to totally transform us. He wants to change our inward part. That truth will be manifested. That we will have the love of the truth. That we'll desire truth in the inward part. As David cried out to God. The way we overcome the lies. Getting sucked in and believing them. The way we overcome Telling lies, portraying a lie, is desiring truth in the inward part. Right now, Satan wants to sell you a lie. And that lie is that you're okay as you are. You don't need to do anything in response to this message. You're all right. That message is for somebody else. It's for that person over there or this person over here. It's not for you. You're okay. The truth is, this message is for every one of you and me today. Do you desire truth in the inward parts? Will you allow His truth to be spoken into your heart through His Word, by His Spirit? Will you surrender to His love? Will you yield to His love and surrender and say, Yes, Lord, I need your truth. In my inward part. Because when truth reigns, when truth is there, you'll be set free. You'll know the joy of the Lord. You will not be in bondage to sin, to the slavery of the flesh, of the world, and of the enemy. You will be set free. Let's pray. This morning, will you desire truth in the inward part, in your heart? Will you surrender your heart to His truth? That His truth will be manifested in your life. That you'll grow up into Him. That you'll become mature, not being battered around to and fro. Will you surrender? To the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Father we ask that you would have your way in our life. We ask that you will bring about. Your glory in us. As a church. First Baptist Church. And as individuals who claim the name of Jesus Christ. As Christians. Lord that it would not be. Just this. This. Void, inspirational kind of faith, but it will be true faith in you, in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We ask God 
that you'd have your way in our lives, that you would be in control. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? If God has spoken to your heart, you step out of your seat and you come right now. You respond to God's love as He has confronted the lies in your life that you would surrender to His truth. You come today.